A third type of remote access is built into Windows 2008 Server, but not Windows 7. It is provided by Terminal Services and RDP. Now we're on a copy of 2008 Server, and again we're going to look at um, connecting over RDP and remote desktop connectivity, but um, because it's 2008 Server, we'll also have to configure some uh, Terminal Services connection settings. So we'll take a look at that and some of the features in 2008 Server, how it's different from you know just connecting from one Windows 7 workstation to another. We'll also take a look at modifying the default port configuration. Remember that the default port for RDP is 3389. However, if I were a hacker using a port scanner, I would be scanning for that particular port, and if I found, you know, found it, I would recognize that as a vulnerability. So I would try to exploit that weakness. So what a lot of people will do is they'll modify that from 3389 to some other weird unrecognized port that will hopefully uh, throw a, you know, a port scanner off. And so we'll take a look at that. We can modify that in the registry as well. So to get started, just like we did with Windows 7, we'll want to go to you know, the computer and right click. We're going to go to properties and remote settings. And we'll want to enable remote desktop connection. Now, I only have Administrator and C Germany here, and I could use those accounts, um, as we said before, for an RDP or remote desktop connection, but that's not the most secure or safest way. You, you generally don't want to take your local logon accounts that you use every day and use those same accounts to connect, um, you know, remotely with, because if those passwords were compromised or, you know, it, it, it's just a, a bit less secure, a more secure way to do RDP or remote desktop connections and terminal services would be to create and manage specific accounts just for remote access and just for terminal services. And so we're going to do that. I'm going to right click on computer first. I'm going to do manage. I'm going to go to the configuration tab. And in this example, we haven't done DC promo. We haven't set up a domain. So it's just a, a member only workstation. Well, not even a member only workstation. It's just a standalone workstation because there's no domain. Just a peer to peer work group. And in this case, I want to go down to the local users and groups node. There's no Active Directory users and computers because there's no Active Directory, no DC promo. I'm going to right click new user and I'm just going to make remote user. And I'll go ahead and paste that and paste that and give him a password. Okay. And so now I have a remote user. And the group membership, in this case, it's just a member of users. So he doesn't have, this particular user will not have full administrator privileges. Um, that would be a safer bet or a safer connection. If I wanted to, I could give him administrator privileges just by adding him to the built-in administrators group. If I'm going to do that, it's still safer to use this account. You know, maybe I call it banana or something else, you know, Kiwi or something that hopefully a you know a hacker wouldn't wouldn't easily guess and that just made, it's a little bit more secure than connecting with these local accounts and also that way too if if i thought this account were compromised you know i could disable it or change the password without affecting my local logon accounts and and if it were compromised at least you know these accounts would still be safe i guess that's debatable but maybe it's you know just more secure to not use your everyday local logon accounts for remote access. Although you can, there's nothing, you know, technically, there's nothing preventing you from doing that, but maybe from a security perspective, it's not always the best idea. So we'll use this account remote user. And that user's been created now. So with that user created, I can just go to remote settings and I want to enable that capability. And notice that I don't have, you know, remote assistance capability here on 2008 server, but I'm going to go ahead and select the option um, allow connections from computers running any version of remote desktop. Now if I knew they were all 2008 and all Windows 7, I could go with this option, in which case I'm using network level authentication, but if I need backwards compatibility, as we said in the previous example or tutorial, I have to select this middle option here. Now remember that if Windows doesn't do it for you, you're going to have to go into Control Panel and Firewall and open up port 3389 to allow an RDP connection through. But in this case, the, the wizard uh, in 2008 server is doing it for me. Remote Desktop Firewall Exception will be enabled. I've chosen to enable Remote Desktop, yada, 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 so I'm going to click on OK. 
and then I want to select users and I'm going to add my user that I created just for this purpose um, and I can create a group and add users to that group. I, I make a group remove users and add all of my users to that group that would be you know, if I had a lot of users that would be a more efficient way to do it just follow the AGUDLP example that Microsoft gives. Um, so I'm going to click on OK so that I have that one user now right remote user and I'm going to click on OK and that user has has now been configured and, and added um, to remote desktop settings and just to just take a quick peek at the firewall settings here um, allow a program to the, the firewall will choose that option and notice that that wizard did it for me okay it's allowing remote desktop through and if I needed to specifically I could add a port um, uh, let's just call it RDP. We'll say RDP and 3389. That would be another way I could do it. That would be the standard port, right? Now later we're going to modify it in in the registry. And when we do, we're going to have to come back to the firewall and whatever we change it to, we'll just pull something out of our butt. We'll make it up 5527 or something. Who knows? But um, whenever we do that, remember that we're going to have to come back to the firewall and change the port that's open. Because otherwise, uh, the firewall will block it if it's no longer 3389, if it's no longer that standard port. But you can see how that works, you know, in control panel and in the firewall. So everything's hunky dory there so far. Let's take a peek at which ports are listening for RDP connections. With RDP um, set up now, we're going to look at the ports that are being listened to for RDP connections. So to do that, we can just open a command prompt. And in our command prompt, we just recurse out here so I have a little bit more margin or space for typing commands. And we can use a netstat command with the dash NA option to see what ports are being listened on. And if I scroll up here, you can see, I'll try to zoom in a little bit, you can see that I'm listening on TCP port 3389. So there's the default remote desktop or RDP protocol port that's being listened to or listened on. It is common to change the default RDP port of 3389 used by terminal services to another number to obfuscate the service from port scanners. Now, to change this port, I'm going to leave that command prompt open. Um, we can basically use a registry edit and a terminal services configuration setting. So to do that, I'm going to click on Start in 2008 Server, Administrative Tools, Terminal Services, and terminal services configuration. Once I'm in terminal services configuration, I want to select the RDP-TCP node under the connections box. I'm going to right click and select properties. And then I want to go to the network adapter tab. By default, it has all network adapters configured with this protocol selected. But that's not what we want. What we want to do instead is select a specific interface, a network interface. I only have one. But if you were on a multi-home computer, you would have to choose between those interfaces that you were routing. So in this case, I'll pick my interface, my Intel Pro um, gigabit per second or 1000 NT network connection. And my maximum connections are two. That's fine. I can leave that as it is. And I'm going to go ahead and click on OK to make that setting change. And then I can go ahead and exit out and close uh, my terminal services settings. Now let's change the default RDP port by editing the registry. Now we want to just do a, a registry edit to change the default port. And so to do that, I'm going to use the tool REGEDT32 to open up the registry editor. And once I open the tool, I want to go to HQ Local Machine and System. And I want to go to Current Control Set and Control. And I want to go to Terminal Server. Let me pull this open here and I'll try to zoom in because this is pretty small. But So I'm going to go down to Terminal Server. And then from here, I want to go to Win Stations. And in Win Stations, you look at, open this here, and next, I want to go to RDP TCP. And then here, um, I want to locate the port number key, which is the re registry setting or the default port number. And notice it's specified as 3389. Again, there's our default port. Bit. So you can either double click or right click on it and edit, select to edit the properties. 
Um, and in this case, um, in the edit the word value, I want to select the decimal option. And there's 3389. And in this case, we're going to modify it and change it. So we'll just make it like 5513 uh, for some reason or another. And that way it's not, you know, it's just a, it's a different port. It's not the default uh, RDP port that we normally connect on. Okay. Um, and then I'll go ahead and close the registry editor. And now for this change to take effect, we're going to have to restart the server. Um, you know, terminal services and RDP and all that will have to be restarted with all of the 2008 server services. Um, so in this case, um, I'm going to go ahead and close terminal services and my window there. And let me go ahead and restart. And we'll just say, um, edit to registry will be what we say there. And we'll go ahead and restart here. Once again, don't forget to reboot. Now that we've rebooted and logged back in, let's take a look and see what port we're listening on. So again, I'm going to open a command prompt. And I'll pull this down so you can see a little bit more of the output. Use our tool netstat with the dash na switch or option. And notice that we're no longer listening on the default port of 3389. And, but this time we have, you know, uh, an IP address has been assigned. So there's our specified interface 200.001 and we're now listening on 55.13 and remember if I bring up the registry editor regedit 32 or regedt 32 and let's go down to the port number key remember that's what we changed it to we changed it from the default of 3389 to just a random you know port 55.13 and so that is now what we're listening on 55.13 for an RDP connection. So that's completed changing the server settings, uh, except with the exception of we need to allow, make sure we allow that through the firewall. So for port 5513, again, I want to go here and I want to go to control panel and let me open up Windows Firewall. I'm going to allow a program through the Windows Firewall and then I want to create an exception. I'm going to add a port and we'll just call this secret RDP port Mohahaha. and it was what was it 5513 I believe I have to check 5513 yeah so 5513 that's the port we want to add it's a TCP port okay and so there's our secret RDP port you can see those are properties 5513 and that's exactly what we want to allow through. All right. So now we're set on the server. So let's look at connecting via RDP uh, on the client. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and close out here. With the RDP TS server all set to connect over an obfuscated modified port, let's log on to the client and make a connection using the designated port. So now that we're on the client, let's again use our remote desktop connection utility. So I'm going to select remote desktop connection and I'm going to use the IP address of the server. So 200.0.0.1. And because it's not the default port 3389, I need to use a colon and specify the weird random port that we changed it to. So it would be 5513. Instead, I'll click connect. And then it'll ask me for, you know, in this case, the person who has permission to connect. Remember, we made a user account remote user. And I can't remember the password. I think it was. Okay, the identity of the remote computer cannot be verified. And again, I know, I trust the computer I'm connecting to, so I don't have to worry about the certificate. I'm just going to select the yes. And we will remotely log in as remote user. Okay, so I'm on 200.002, uh, a Windows 7 client. 
but I'm logging in over RDP using port 5513 to uh, 200.001. So I'm on 200.002, Windows 7. I'm logging into a 2008 server that's 200.001 and uh, RDP over a different port. There is but one last caveat, Padawan. One last caveat. Remember that um, everything we did here was um, to a standalone server. So it was a peer-to-peer -peer situation. No Active Directory was set up, no client server. This was not a domain controller, just a, a standalone server. If, on the other hand, you're doing this on a domain controller and you have Active Directory set up, you've run DC Promo and it's a domain controller and you have group policy in effect, there's one more setting you're going to need to set in order to be able to connect via remote desktop or terminal services. And if you remember, remember when you run DC Promo, that by default it denies the ability to log on locally. For good security reasons, you usually don't want people other than administrators to be messing around on your domain controllers. Now you can always modify or change that. Remember if you go into the default domain controllers policy and the user rights assignment, you can find the, uh, you know, privilege that allows you to log on locally and you can add those users if they're not administrators you know say Bob Joe Billy Sue whoever you can add them or, or those groups to that particular setting and then you'll have to do GP update with the dash space dash force option and update your group policy and then they'll be able to log on to those domain controllers we have a similar situation with terminal services if you're going to do terminal services on a domain controller you'll want to go to uh, click Start, Administrative Tools, the Domain Controller Security Policy, and you want to select the default Domain Controller Security Settings, expand Local Policies node, um, expand the User Rights Assignment, and then you want to click on the Allow Logon Through Terminal Services and add those groups or those users to that privilege as well and do your GP update. 